film is one in a series about growing trees outside woodlands. These hugely important but often overlooked trees are the ones near you. Trees you are most likely to come across in places like your local park, streets, hedges or school grounds, and those that enhance our farmland and food production. They make up nearly a third of England's trees. But these trees are often only there because they have been planted and nurtured by previous generations. We need more trees growing in these spaces so that our children and grandchildren can enjoy them too. Through pilot projects, our partnership has tested different methods to establish trees in a variety of non-woodland settings across England. These are the places where tree planting has often been thought of as being too difficult or costly. This Trees on Farms pilot project has been exploring how we can best support farmers establishing trees in different settings across their land. Having trees on farms brings a variety of benefits, from enriching soil quality to providing habitat for wildlife, shade for livestock and mitigating the effects of climate change. In this video, you'll hear from three very different yet all inspiring projects in Cornwall, West Sussex and Shropshire. We hope their energy and dedication will inspire you to think of ways to encourage more trees on farms. Farms in the UK make up the majority of land use, so they're really important and significant to be able to grow and nurture more trees in, across the country. We worked with different local authorities across the UK, so we worked with five different county and district councils, um, and there's lots of different people across these projects which are doing different things which really inspire other people to take part in more Trees on Farms initiatives. If I could make one change to the farming landscape over the next 10 years, uh, it would be continuing with projects like this, thinking more about land sharing rather than land sparing and actually thinking about how the things we are doing impact the land and how we can lessen that. I think trees on farms are hugely important, both in terms of the landscape benefit to break up the landscape and provide variety, diversity and interest. And trees on farms are vital to provide habitat for birds, for insects and for small mammals. By looking at trees in a serious way in terms of what they can deliver to us as food producers and food producing businesses, we can recognise the value that they have in the landscape. As a farm, we are very keen that we steward this land well because I think we all feel we've got to do as much as we can to, to avoid a complete climate catastrophe. So we know we've got a lot of great opportunities for getting more trees in our hedgerows, within the fields and within our orchards and actually how they can become a really integrated part of the landscape rather than thinking that it's something that has to be separate. My name is Nick Rolls, I'm the Trees Outside Woods Project Officer for Shropshire Council. Since 2020 we've given grants to landowners and farmers to encourage the uptake of agroforestry and orchards and in this time we've planted 19,000 trees in Shropshire in 49 different um, agroforestry and orchard schemes so it's been really popular, been really impressed with the, the amount of interest in, in agroforestry in the county. I'm Amelia Lake and we're here at the Real Food Garden. We're primarily a market garden. We produce a huge range of different annual vegetables for our farm shop and veg box scheme. We also have laying hens. We produce free range rare breed pork, lamb and hoggets from our flock of sheep. And we also do conservation grazing and produce really good quality beef. So having a focus on per perennials and getting trees out into the site has 
been important to us from the beginning. We recognise the benefits that it can bring to us as a business. We recognise the benefits it brings to the soil. Um, and also increasingly with our livestock, trees hold such potential as well as the produce that we'll get from the fruit trees. So it's been important to us to make the business more resilient and robust. But it's also been important to us to meet one of our goals. Our mission is to nourish people in place. And if we're only producing food without nourishing the place, we, we're sort of failing in that mission. And so increasing biodiversity, ecosystem services, our sort of bioresilience as well. The scheme has been fantastic to be part of. I uh, had an idea of what it was that I wanted to achieve, but the team have kind of supported, provided feedback, allowed us to kind of develop our ideas and the, and the plans based on their vast amount of experience. And as food producers, we're often very focused on one place and the team has been able to draw in all of that experience from other sites. So we got in touch with Ben at Cornwall Council with an idea for what we wanted to achieve and we worked really in collaboration with them and they helped inform um, the design that we came up with. And for me, trees are our biggest tool that can help us lessen our experience of climate change as food producers, as well as mitigate climate change by sequestering carbon, it kind of slows down water flow when we get extreme weather events, which we're going to get more of. My name's Rose Barnicott. I farm a uh, Bidinic farm here in Mid Cornwall with my brother and son. We're a uh, mixed beef, sheep, proudly organic. My son is the fourth generation to farm at Bidinic, and we've, we're nearly at our 100th anniversary. We've probably put in nearly two and a half thousand trees in the last three years. And actually, if you can't make farms, diverse and rich for nature, you've actually not got a hope of, of reversing a decline in, in bird numbers and mammal numbers. Farms would once have been surrounded by trees and I think we've just got to go back to that. We chose this scheme because at the time I, I was in a, uh, an old countryside stewardship scheme and we've been in countryside stewardship for sort of 20 odd years and it was, it didn't allow me to do fencing options very easily. Uh, so that was one reason. Um, it was also, once we'd, once we'd had that kind of initial hook, okay, you get fencing, then the idea of being able to enrich the hedges without, to be honest, we haven't lost much land. It's maybe a couple of acres in all the schemes we've done. It's not much. You know, it would have mean another kind of, you know, six sheep or something, um, which I can well do without. We got great advice from, from the officer, Ben Norwood. Um, and it was the kind of sympathetic and flexible approach that was so attractive to us. To feel that your local council is on the side of the farmers, is working with them in a way to, so that farmers can, can make a difference in a way that's realistic. Hi, my name is Ben Norwood and I'm one of the project officers for the Shared Outcome Fund and I work for Cornwall Council. I think one of the strengths of being flexible in the grant allows it to respond to what's appropriate to the landscape and also to the landowner's objectives. And we know we're facing a, a whole number of challenges uh, with trees, so be it from diseases or stresses from uh, changes in climate. So actually having really creative and flexible projects helps to improve that resilience and make sure that they'll thrive going forward. I think there's going to be going forward a, a real need to balance our requirement for food production, uh, but also our requirements to make sure we're providing habitats for wildlife um, and also make sure we're doing our utmost to combat uh, climate change. What the Shared Outcome Fund project has allowed us to do is uh, given us almost permission to be flexible and um, sort of respond uh, to working with landowners and respond to their ideas as well on how we can sort of uh, 
uh, mutually create a project so it works to everyone's advantage and from that we've come up with some really interesting ideas and people have then also had the confidence to maybe experiment, trial as well, maybe different things we weren't doing before. Hello, my name is Lucy. I'm the Assistant Agronomist and Trials Manager at Barfoot Farms. So today we've had the task of planting just over a thousand metres of hedgerow. Um, and that's a, a mix of hawthorn, blackthorn, cherry, elder, willow and all sorts of species to, to bring some wildlife to our farm. Here at Eastern Farm we're not very far from the sea, so the effect of wind coming off the salt water has a big effect on our crops. Through planting hedgerows in this area particularly, we can use those to shelter our crops and shelter other areas of the landscape. So having additional trees and hedges across our farm will benefit the land through restoring more organic matter into the soil. Uh, that can benefit us through compaction with our farm machinery, it can help with flood management and drought management, which we experience a lot here, and that can store carbon. Hi, my name's Nikki Horta. I work for the Chichester Harbour Trust. We look after 15 different sites within Chichester Harbour National Landscape. Um, this area is called Marina Farm, part of the Chichester Harbour National Landscape. Um, and we bought this property just over a year ago. It was a derelict brownfield site and our plan was to buy it, completely clear it and then restore it for nature, for wildlife and for local people to enjoy. What we want to create is a mixture of habitats so that we can have the maximum possible wildlife benefit. And so part of that is to plant a small woodland right in the middle of the site that will be a mixture of trees and shrubs. And that will benefit birds particularly, um, but also invertebrates, insects. And, and it just adds to that real variety of habitats. And the volunteers have just blasted through it in an hour and a half and we've planted 200 trees today. They're all native shrubs and they come from a local Sussex supplier and it's a mixture of shrubs and the big trees which we call the standards so you can see behind me the taller trees we've got a mixture of wild cherry we've got wild service tree we've got English oak and we've got hornbeam. Hi, my name's Oliver Kiniston. Uh, we're here at Temple Fields and we've developed a diverse agroforestry system here where we're combining fruit trees, some timber trees, uh, an arable setup and some sheep uh, and also a short rotation coppice. So we've tried to cram as many uh, different things involving trees and farming all in one spot. Um, and we're delighted how it's gone after the first year. We wanted to do something a little bit ambitious rather than uh, go for the sort of simple intervention at the beginning. We thought, let's see how much we can do all in one go uh, and hopefully we'll learn a lot. So we were lucky enough to be able to get some support to fund quite a lot of things all in one place. Um, so we're really delighted that Trees Outside Woodland were able to sort of trust us and, and uh, go with something a bit more interesting, a bit more complex in this, in this site. Integrating trees into, into fields it's, it's kind of not a new thing if you look around actually there's a beautiful old oak tree there that's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years that's a sort of agroforestry but we just wanted to increase the density of trees here and also the varieties of trees why is that important well hopefully we can diversify the business a little bit with the fruit trees we can sequester more carbon and improve biodiversity on the site i think the thing about agroforestry is that you're not trading off between growing food and having trees. You're hopefully able to integrate the both of them um, to potentially improve the food production, um, to increase the ability, the, the, what's called the land carrying capacity. If you were thinking about embarking on a hedgerow planting scheme and working towards a project like this uh, I would say go for it we've had 
great participation across our business, not just people who directly are in contact with the farm, our, our wider team. It's, it's been great team building as well as giving back to the environment. So I think learning between farmers who have been integrating more trees onto their land um, and allowing them to, to learn from each other is really important because you can get a huge amount of information from somebody who's planted trees 15, 20 or 30 years ago in the same way that you, you can't learn it all on your own. So I think working together, local authorities working together, helping to share these stories of, of the successes and the failures is really important. Well, for me personally, I love doing these projects and I think it's so rewarding to see everyone come out, really get stuck in, they really enjoy it. And what's amazing is to see a, a complete blank canvas bare site like this and then come back over the years and watch it grow. And there's nothing more satisfying when you live locally, you know, my, bring my kids here and they'll be able to see how it transforms in the coming years. So I'm really excited to see what happens. You know, local authorities can think about schemes like this because it's a, definitely a win for nature. It's definitely a win for the environment. But it's also a win for farmers and I think I think it would be good if local authorities are seen to provide a bit of a kind of nurturing environment for their, for their local farmers. I am really excited for the future in 10 years, 20 years to look back and, and see these hedgerows up to their full height uh, and see just so much more permanent greenery around the farm uh, and birds whizzing out of them, insects everywhere and just really bringing back the life to, to the, the farming landscape. It was fantastic to see so much interest uh, in trees on farms across the UK um, and across this project. Uh, we're really delighted about the number of people that are getting together and taking part in different initiatives. And we hope that this film has inspired you and local authorities to learn more about farmers and landowners and how we can better support them in the future. The world is changing fast. We need to weave trees back into all our landscapes, in cities, towns and villages on farms and rural land, next to our roads and railways, and all across our countryside. We need to establish trees rapidly and effectively to help restore nature and boost biodiversity where it's most needed. To get new results and establish trees rapidly and effectively, we need to try new things and experiment. You've heard from farmers, landowners and community groups about the benefits of having trees on farms and what's motivated them to take action and try something new. We hope that you also feel inspired by their ideas, creativity and energy and that we can work together to plant more trees on farms.